Is a spring election coming? Speculation is rife after Prime Minister Justin Trudeau shuffled some of the top members of his cabinet this morning. Mark Garneau is the new foreign affairs minister moving over from transport. He replaces Francois-Philippe Champagne, who takes over the innovation and industry file after Navdeep Bain's step down from cabinet. He's not running in the next election. Parliamentary Secretary Omar Al-Gabra is the new transport minister, and Jim Carr is back in cabinet as a special representative for the Prairies. He's been recovering from cancer. Mark Garneau joins us now. He is the new Minister of Foreign Affairs, and he's with us from Montreal. Hi, Minister. Good to see you, and congratulations on your new portfolio. Thank you very much, Fashi. When did the Prime Minister tell you that, that you'd be taking this over, and did it come as a surprise? It did come as a surprise, and it was Friday night at 5 o'clock, and of course he swore me to secrecy, And uh, but uh, I spent the whole weekend thinking about my new job. Is it your understanding, or was it conveyed to you, uh, if you can reveal through the Prime Minister, that this the reason for this is Navdeep Bain's no longer being in Cabinet, or is there more to it? Is this about an election? Uh, I didn't find out about the reason for it until um, until the rumors started to come out last night uh, in the media. So it was a total surprise to me. And it was a decision by the prime minister. And of course, I'm honored and thrilled to be taking on this new task. OK, let me let me ask you some questions about the portfolio and, and taking into account. And I'm sure our audience is as well that you're uh, about six or seven or eight hours <laughs> into into the new job. But you do have a lot of familiarity with the portfolio, uh, specifically because you chaired the committee on, on Canada U.S. relations. So I do want to start at that relationship. You said today that it was the most important bilateral relationship for Canada. There is a new administration about to come in. I think it's widely acknowledged that the tone and tenor of the relationship will change as a result. But there are still some irritants, and I want to focus on one, and that is the that pres President-elect Joe Biden promised in his campaign campaign unequivocally to revoke the presidential permit where Keystone XL is concerned. Uh, do you have any indication, has the government had any indication from anyone close to Joe Biden that he might back down from that? Uh, no, we haven't got any indications of it. But uh, as uh, my predecessor said, and, uh, and I will say it again, uh, we are the most reliable partner to the United States in terms of providing energy. Uh, perhaps Canadians don't realize that but we provide a great deal of energy to the United States. And of course, we'll be making that point as we begin discussions with the new administration. What does it say, though, that there be no indications thus far in the months since the election that Joe Biden plans to change his mind? Should Canadians take from that that this is nearly impossible? I don't think so. Uh, let's face it, uh, the new administration has other things on their mind at the moment, and uh, they've got a few more days before they uh, become uh, the new administration. So uh, uh, I cannot fully understand that they are not focused at the moment on uh, how they're going to deal with Canada. But that will come very quickly uh, uh, soon after the new administration is in place. During the press conference, you talked a little bit about what kinds of conversations you'll be having once that administration is in place. And specifically, you highlighted uh, what we know is that in here in Canada as, as the story of the two Michaels, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spower, both of whom have now been in prison, detained in China for more than 760 days. Does that necessitate the fact that they have been behind, uh, detained in China for that long, that there have only been, you know, very small bits of progress in so far as, you know, consular visits, for example, have resumed? Does that necessitate, from your vantage point, a different perspective under your leadership? Well, I, I will say and repeat that uh, the two Michaels is our number one preoccupation with respect to our relationship with China. We know that uh, the United States shares the same feeling as we do, that the two Michaels uh, have not uh, have been detained uh, illegally in China. We will certainly be speaking to them about that uh, because of the fact that uh, this is a major, major irritant between uh, Canada and China. And we know that uh, uh, the United States and China also uh, have some things that, uh, that uh, they uh, have to resolve as well. So we'll be talking with uh, the United States and uh, hopefully uh, making a common front with them with respect to the two Michaels and perhaps some other issues. Your predecessors, though, were not able to secure the release of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver. Again, I, I, my question is around the government's approach thus far. If progress hasn't been achieved, you know what the opposition is saying. You need to take a harder line on China. Do you think, under your leadership, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will take a harder line? 
Well, I look forward to meeting my counterpart uh, in the United States uh, very shortly and uh, to start discussions with them and to see where we can go with it. I think it's a little bit too early for me to speculate about uh, how that will go, but I'm looking forward to at the earliest point in time to make contact with my counterpart. And certainly um, there are a number of issues we're going to bring out, bring up, including that one. I, I don't just mean, though, with your with your counterpart in the United States. I mean the Canadian posture towards China, this country's foreign policy, will, which will be under uh, your direction towards China. You, you've been privy to all the back and forth, uh, all the committees that have taken place, a subcommittee that declared genocide, for example, was going on against Uyghurs in China. Do you will will this ministry under your leadership uh, take a harder line against China in so far as all those things I just listed? Well, we've always been frank with uh, China. My predecessor uh, was very frank with them, and I will continue to be very frank with them. If you talk about the Uyghurs, of course, we are gravely preoccupied with the reports that we have uh, obtained uh, over over time uh, with respect to the treatment of Uyghurs, the fact that they are under constant surveillance, that some of them are in camps, that they are in forced labor camps. And that's what, one of the things, for example, that today was announced. Uh, Probably the last thing that Minister Champagne uh, announced before uh, turning over uh, the job to me, and that is that uh, we, along with the United Kingdom and, and other countries, are going to put in place regulations that will ensure that we do not import any products that might come from the Xinjiang region that are the product of uh, forced labor camps uh, in, involving Uyghurs. And we're very, very glad that uh, we're uh, in a common front with a number of other countries with respect to that policy. So that's a very direct uh, statement to China with respect to their treatment of the Uyghurs and their overall record with respect to human rights. It was definitely the most significant step this government has taken on that issue. Do you believe what's happened to the Uyghurs, what is happening to the Uyghurs constitutes genocide, Minister? I believe that uh, there is no question that there has been an abuse of human rights in the case of the Uyghurs. Uh, no question about it in terms of uh, how they are uh, con under constant surveillance, how they are uh, put in detention camps, how they are forced uh, to do labor. Uh, those are things that I'm going to look at in, in, in great detail in the, in the coming weeks although a lot of it is 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 very much public knowledge at the moment. Yeah, yeah and, and that's why I asked the question, because like I said at the top, I am taking into account that you're brand new to the portfolio, so I don't want to put you in an unfair position. But so much of what you just laid out is public knowledge. In fact, it was uh, studied extensively by the subcommittee on, on human rights in, in Parliament. Bob Ray, uh, the, this, this government's uh, representative at the UN, specifically called it uh, genocide, fits into the definition of genocide in the Genocide Convention, he said, before the UN. UN. Uh, your predecessor has not been willing to go that far, which is why, in part, the opposition has said that, that your government has claimed, has insinuated that your government is soft on China. So uh, once again, I ask you specifically and very directly, do you think what's happening to the Uyghurs in China constitutes genocide? Uh, I will uh, have the opportunity in the coming days to dig deeply into the, uh, into the portfolio, and uh, I will um, probably have more to say with respect to that, but uh, uh, you, you must allow me a little bit of time to familiarize myself with all of the details, which are complex, some of which are probably not common knowledge. I certainly can do that, and, and I look forward, Minister, to having you back on and, and asking you again at a, at a later time. Thanks for making the time, and congratulations again on the new portfolio. Thanks, Vashi. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.